Before we get into our training video, if by chance you found this video as a recommended video on YouTube, this training video is actually part of an extensive Corel Draw for Beginners training series from AdvancedTShirts.com. We have developed dozens of videos and we also have available on our website downloadable work along files that you can work with in Corel Draw while you're working through the training videos. Easily the best and fastest way to learn. If these videos are helpful to you, please take a second to add a like to the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be notified when we upload new video content. And of course, in the comment section below, you can post your questions or your Corel Draw video tutorial requests. In this video session, we're going to take a look at the Smart Fill tool. This is a tool I use very often in CorelDRAW, both in the production artwork side, such as vector tracing, and in the graphic design side. It's a very handy tool because it creates vector objects for you based on the area in which lines or shapes or curves are overlapping or cutting off one area from another. This tool is down here in the toolbox beneath the interactive fill tool. I'll left click and select that. You can see my property bar has changed to the smart fill property bar. I can go to my fill and specify that. Use default, specify. I can come here and select a color. For my fill, I can specify my outline. Go with default or no outline. I have a drop down list of a number of different outline presets here. And I can also select my outline color. Now the basic functionality of the tool, if I come down here, I have one, two, three circles or ellipse shapes. Wherever the shapes overlap or cut out, that's where the Smart Fill tool will create a new vector object. If I click here in between the ellipse on the left and the one down here in the bottom, I'll have a new vector shape. It would be the same here. Now if I hit Control Z and click here, I'll get this area where this circle and its line are cutting off the rest of the ellipse or the circle. So that's the fundamentals of how the Smart Fill tool works. And I think you can see how it can be a very handy tool when you're working in graphic design. We'll scroll down and see how we can use the Smart Fill tool to add some nice effects to racing text or graphic text as well as basic shapes to give them depth. And you can see with this design we've got this kind of flow to go along with like a flame effect and then we've got the gradient fills and then we've got the stars beveled out with yellow and orange to give the orange a shade look of the yellow and depth to the star shape. You can see over here on the right what I've done and I'll zoom in. Here I've taken and created a basic curved line that's kind of wavy almost like a flame type effect going through the text. And down here I've got a star where I've created some lines based on blocking out or cutting off across the arms or the points in the star. Go to view and wireframe and you can see what I've done here. I zoom in, I've got this line going through here. So that's going to cut off the top of the text from the bottom of the text so I can create the effect at the bottom of the text using the Smart Fill tool and creating new vector objects through the bottom of the text. And you'll see the same over here with the star. I've got these line segments flowing through here that I've set up and this is very easy to do and you'll learn about doing these things in future sessions but right now we're just covering what the Smart Fill tool does. And then we can go through and create the shading and highlighting and add the depth to the star element for the design. You go back to view and enhanced. Now I'll pull back on my center mouse wheel and zoom out. I'm going to go with the default fill here and then I'll zoom in just a bit 
and I'll click here and I'll create that vector shape as a smart fill. This one, then I've got a smaller one up here I need to fill. Here, we'll go here, then here, then here, filling these with vector objects. And I'll click here. And that's there, but you can't see it because of the outline. I'll click here, left click, left click, and then one more right here. Now I'll hit my space bar to go back to the pick tool, select the line that I used to cut off the bottom of the text for the smart fill tool and delete that. Now I've got that effect. Now what I want to do is select all of this. So I'm going to go to my pick tool. I'm going to change that to the freehand pick tool. And then I'll just left click, hold down and lasso around that without selecting the text. Now all of that is selected. I can see 12 objects on layer one. Then I'll come up and weld these objects into one curve on layer one. Next, I'll fill this with a black. So I'm going to select this object and I'm going to duplicate it. So I'll push forward left click hold down and move this just a little bit and you can see the blue lines i'm not going to move it too much just enough so that we can use some of that black in the design i'm going to right click and take the outline off of that then i'll go to my interactive fill tool i'm going to left click hold down and pull and make sure that the rotation handle is following the angle of the text now, I could change the color from the color node, but I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to click on the yellow. And is that the right color? Let's zoom out and take a look. No, actually, I want a red there. So I'll click on the red. And then I'll come down here to this color node, left click to select that, come over to the color palette and right click on the yellow. It's very easy to set up. And then if I want to, I can dial this in a little bit. Bring that down to say right there. I'll pull back on my center mouse wheel, zoom out, and I can see I've got just about the same effect, but I might want to bring the red down in just a bit to right about there. That'll look good. Next, I'll go with my interactive fill tool and select the racing text. Start at the top, left click, hold down, make sure that rotation arm is following the text at the same angle and you can see that right here now this node that I have selected I know that's going to be a yellow so I'll just come over to the color palette and left click on the yellow to fill that come back over select the color node at the top I could change that here but it's just too easy to come over to the color palette and change that to a red go back to the yellow color node push that up and get some more contrast and you can see how we got that effect in our text using the smart fill tool and the interactive fill tool. We'll zoom into the star and we'll see what I did here. And I'm going to go back to the regular pick tool here and I'm going to go to view and wireframe. Now, from the wireframe, I can see that I've taken and created straight lines through the points of the star all the way around so I can create the look of the depth between the orange and the yellow in the bevel of the star or the bevel effect that I'll create. One thing that we want to be aware of is that if we do not have our line segments going entirely through I'll double click here and I'll change this to here so it's not going entirely through the object here and you'll see what happens here and go to view and enhanced go back to the smart fill tool and I'll click let's say down here and you'll see a nice clean section there with the new fill of the vector object I'll hit control Z but here I don't have the arm going all the way through if I click here it's going to fill both. 
that's not what I want. So you want to be aware of that. When you see that problem, that means that your line or your object is not completely overlapping the area that you want to create the new vector object with the Smart Fill tool. So go back to View and Wireframe, because many times I just see my wireframes when I'm setting up my lines and shapes to work with the Smart Fill tool. And I'll hit the space key to go back to the pick tool. Zoom in here, double click on that line segment and just bring that up here. Now I know it's going from here all the way through this wireframe segment of the star. I'll do the same thing over here and make sure that's going all the way. And I'll zoom out and we'll look there, we'll look there, we'll look here. That's just fine. If you're off a little bit, you can just select it and then line that right up where you want it to go through right there and dial things in. Now I created this with the Bezier tool. I was just drawing lines. So now that I'm done here, I'm going to go back to view and enhanced. I'm going to go to the smart fill tool and I'll change my fill to a yellow. Bring that down here into a pure yellow or close to it. And then I'm going to close this. I'll zoom out and see what was going on here with the star from the other design. It was going yellow to the left and then orange. So I'll come through here. Yellow, 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 every other one. Yellow and yellow. So there's my yellow. Then I'll go back and change this to an orange. And we'll close that. Zoom back in. Orange, 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 and orange. Now, I made a mistake there. I'll hit Control Z to undo that. I didn't want to hit that yellow. I wanted to hit here, and here, and here. There we go. Now I'm going to select everything and just come up to my color palette and right click to take off the outline. I'm going to go back to View Wireframe with my pick tool and select these line segments that I used to set up the smart fill. Just selecting them, left click, make sure you're hovering over them and deleting them, making sure that I get them all. And then I'll go back to view and enhance. Now my star shape is ready. I'll left click lasso everything. I can just hit control G to group those objects. And I have a group of 12 objects. Pull back on my center mouse wheel. Bring my star over. Left click to go to rotate and skew mode. Skew that star up into the racing design. Resize that to right about there. Skew that up a little bit more. I'll zoom in so I can see that better. Make sure I'm following the angle of the text. I'll pull back on my center mouse wheel to zoom out. Left click and duplicate this here. And I'll go to my scale handle and change the size of that, make it smaller. Bring it to right about there. I'll duplicate that down here also. And we've got the star effect in here. Now this has three instead of five. But you can see how working with the Smart Fill tool is able to add a nice effect to my racing text, as well as add a nice beveled effect or look to the star-shaped elements of the design. Pull back and you see down here I have the 21 racing design. I did the same thing with this. And actually, you'll find on advancedtshirts.com a complete tutorial on this design and how I made it and how it was set up. We'll go ahead and wrap here, and we'll continue in our next video session.